Hey, what's up guys? And first of all, I'm not going to be continuing. What if Naruto got sent to the high school DxD world? Many of you guys don't seem to like that at all, so I'm going to be giving you something for it instead. After all, I can't just delete something and not giving you something for it. So yeah, here it is guys. This is going to be a crossover, but with something more regular. A crossover between Naruto and the DC world. It will mainly focus on the Team Titan. Naruto is going to be sent there to the world guys and yes, he is going to basically create the Teen Titans. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy so sit back relax and yeah, enjoy. And don't forget to stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming your way over the other channels. Yes, I indeed have fourth them guys link in description so go ahead, check them out and enjoy. So without further ado or wasting more time, what do you say we jump right into this brand new series begin now guys. We begin this new series in Gotham, at the Wayne Manor, home to one of the city's wealthiest men, Bruce Wayne, the child of the late Thomas and Martha Wayne. Bruce's parents had been killed when he was only 8 years old, an event that would forever shape him into the man that he is now. By day, he wore the persona of a wealthy playboy, but by night, he donned the mask of Batman, the Dark Knight. In the years that has followed, he has dealt with very dangerous criminals like Penguin, Poison Ivy, Harlequin, and most of all, Joker. However, Bruce will never give up the fight, always being the watchful protector he was. As he was currently in his manor, glancing up towards a portrait of his parents, their watchful gaze always watching over him. There was also his caretaker slash butler Alfred Pennyworth as he was also there as well. Suddenly though, the dark sky became cloudy. Bruce stepped towards the window as he heard thunder, lightning, a violent flash could be heard. It is almost that the sky itself ripped open and there was a bright light that came down. Shield in his eyes, Bruce, wait until everything cleared up. As he made his way outside, there was a gigantic crater in his lawn. Someone was lying inside of said crater. It was a body of what seemed to be a 12 or 13 year old boy. As he was dressed in a tattered orange jumpsuit, bleeding, wounds all over his body. Time skip. Naruto stir as he was finally regaining consciousness. As his eyes finally opened up. The last thing you remember was clashing with Sasuke and getting damage. Then he was swallowed by this strange black dome. And it cracked and now he was here. Confused as he wondered where he was. He tried to understand what was going on. Oh, I see. You're awake. Naruto was startled. Flipping off the bed that he was on as he landed on his feet, wobbly. As he took up a defensive stance. Who are you? Where am I? Said Naruto looking around. As Alfred looked at him. I see. You speak Japanese, Alfred said. Being a man of many talents, Alfred spoke back in Japanese. Please, wait here, he said. As Naruto scratched his head. What was that old man saying, he said to himself in confusion. A voice then spoke up. My guess is. When you clashed with that Uchiha brat, you were sent to a foreign land. The voice of the Kayubi spoke up. A few minutes later, the old man returned with someone else. As both of their eyes locked as Naruto looked towards this newcomer. However, Naruto saw something in his eyes. Something that seemed to reflect in his own. The man spoke in Japanese. Hello, my name is Bruce Wayne, he said. 
As Naruto looked at him, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, he said. Where am I? And how do I get back to Kanoha? Kanoha? said Bruce, confused. Kanoha, the hidden leaf, said Naruto. You're currently in Gotham City, I'm sorry, but I never heard of this Kanoha before, said Bruce. Well, I gotta find it. I gotta go. I gotta stop Sasuke. I gotta keep my promise, said Naruto. But it seems like it was that moment his body decided to tell him that he was not in a condition to do so, as he felt pain course all through him. Hold on, you're not in any condition to go anywhere. You should rest first, and then... We'll talk about helping you get back home once. You've recovered, Bruce said. Naruto, though reluctant, he nodded his head. Alfred, got to tend in Naruto wounds. Where are your parents? asked Bruce. I don't have any, said Naruto. As Bruce paused, seeing that look in the boy's eyes. I see, I'm sorry. It's fine. I don't even remember them, said Naruto. You don't know anything about them, do you? said Bruce. As from his tone, he could tell that Naruto knew nothing. As Naruto paused at that, he frowned as he nodded. Alfred, prepare a room and some food for a new guest. Any favorite meals, Bruce asked him. Ramen, Naruto shouted. As Alfred chuckled. As he nodded his head. Right away, Master Uzumaki, he said. As he left. Master, said Naruto confused. Alfred is my butler, and he calls everyone that live here Master. But he's pretty much family, said Bruce. With a small but very genuine smile. Oh, said Naruto. As Bruce helped Naruto up. What is it that you eat a lot, he asked. As he found him rather light for his age. Ramen, said Naruto. All you eat is ramen? That is not too healthy, said Bruce. Well, back home that was all I could afford. Everything else was overpriced, said Naruto, as he crossed his arms. As Bruce made a mental note of that. So, what do you do, old man, said Naruto. I'm in my thirties, said Bruce. Well, that's old compared to me, said Naruto, with a grin. Mental note. This kid seemed to be some kind of prankster as well, Bruce thought to himself. I am the owner of a company that makes tech to help people. As he made it simple for Naruto, Naruto looked him over. Owner for company, huh? But you look like a fighter to me. The way you carry yourself. Hmm. He has some brains. Bruce thought to himself. The door to the room then opened as a young teen boy who was slightly older than Naruto came in. This was Dick Grayson. Hey, Bruce. Alfred said that we had a guest, said Dick. Hey, said Naruto with a small wave. Dick raised an eyebrow at Naruto speaking Japanese as he looked towards Bruce with a raised eyebrow. This is Naruto Uzumaki. He will be staying with us for the foreseeable future, Bruce said in English. Are you going to make him one of us? Dick asked curiously in English. Hey, Naruto yelled. I know you're talking about me. Sorry about that little man. My name is Dick Grayson, Dick said in Japanese. As Naruto snorted on hearing his name. Well, my real name is Richard Grayson, but everyone call me Dick. People are cruel, said Naruto with a small grin. This caused someone from outside to laugh, as the door opened up showing a teenage girl with red hair. This was Barbara Gordon. I like this kid, Bruce. Where do you find him? Barbara said with a smile. In a crater, said Bruce. Wow, never knew that you could crack a joke. Now where did you really find him? Asked Barbara. Bruce gave them a look, as he didn't bother to say anything else, as Barbara and Dick was completely silent. Of course he's not kidding. He doesn't possess the ability to tell jokes, Dick said under his breath. Other dimension? Barbara said, raising her eyebrow, as she knew that was a thing, thanks to the incident with the Justice League, as she shuddered at the thought of the Justice Lords. Well, after he gets some food and rest, I plan to look him over in the morning. What's another dimension? Nuta asks. It's a different world, basically, said Dick. The logic was even lost on him sometime with the rules. I know often this happened. Wait, so I can't get home? Naruto shouted in surprise. Nice job, Dick, said Barbara. As Dick frowned. That is when Alfred came in. Dinner is ready, sir. As Naruto nose picked up on the smell of ramen, 
Hell yeah, he said as he sped off. Whoa, he's fast, said Dick. He had ninja equipment on him when I found him, said Bruce. As they followed after Naruto, as he showed, the kunas and shurikens and other ninja tools in his pouch. They were of decent quality but lower than the League of Shadows standards. Do you think that he's a part of Rod's group? Asked Dick. The League equipment would match, but these are older style. It's like it was from the period of actual shinobis and ninjas. And Roz is one thing, but he doesn't lack quality. These are too average for his taste. And this metal is not on the periodic table, Bruce said as he looked at the kunai. So another dimension that is based on feudal Japan, Barbara asks, because that actually seemed normal. When you have aliens that came from other planets, things like this wasn't so surprising anymore. Most likely, Bruce said, as they enter to see Alfred giving Naruto a second bowl of ramen. Master Naruto, please slow down. You can take your time to eat, Alfred said. As he was scarfing down the ramen that Alfred gave him with the chopsticks. No way, this is great, said Naruto. As he brought the thing up and simply devoured all. The others stood there in shock and amusement as well. Time skip. A few days later. Thanks to the Kayube, it only took him a few days to get back to full health. And while he was healing, Bruce and the others taught Naruto English. As Naruto had just left the kitchen with a cookie in his hand that he swiped from the cookie jar when Alfred was not looking. As Naruto snickered as he ate it, Master Uzumaki, please be aware that you only get one freebie from me before I retaliate, Alfred said with a knowing smile. As Naruto groaned, Alfred always seemed to catch him. Wow, Alfred is really good, Naruto thought, as he walked into the parlor. As he passed, a grandfather clock, something caught his eye. What's a bat doing inside of a clock, he thought, as Naruto opened it and pressed down on it. However, the entire inside moved, showing a staircase. Cool, Naruto thought, as he was attacked by several bats. He waved his hand like crazy, trying to get them away before he tripped. Oh crap, Naruto thought as he fell down the stairs. As he slammed down hard in the flat surface. Before he noticed many things. A giant coin. Dinosaur. And many other things all around. Whoa. What the hell is this, Naruto thought. Looks like that guy has secrets. The Kayubi thought in interest. We all have our secrets. This is so cool, Naruto thought as he got up. As he started to touch everything. Like a kid in a candy store. Later, the Batmobile came in the cave. With Batman and Robin and Batgirl seeming to be on a motorcycle. That is when they noticed someone sitting on the main chair spinning on it. As he looked at the computer, Batman and Robin watched this surprise that Naruto found the Batcave so soon. He's either incredibly smart or just lucky to find the cave so soon, Batgirl said. As Naruto fell out of the chair. That is when they saw what he was wearing. Holy moly, Robin said. Is he wearing one of your old suits? Batgirl asks with a giggle. I'm Batboy, Naruto said, making his voice deep. As he had seen a lot after coming down here. As the suit was dragging on the ground because it was too big for him. How did you find your way down here? Batman said in a neutral tone. I saw a bat in the clock. I opened it and I fell down here, said Naruto. So, you live in Bruce Wayne's basement, he asked curiously. As Robin started to laugh a bit, as Batgirl chimed in as well. No, Bruce Wayne lived in his attic, she said with a giggle. As Batman was blank, not sure what to say. It's okay, you don't have to tell me. Maybe Dick or Barber can do it for you, Bruce, said Naruto. So you do know, said Batman. Well, I would have to be dumb or rather blind to not. I mean, I can't see you. And your chin is out, said Naruto. Okay, maybe Bruce was right about you having a lot of talent, said Robin. As Naruto pulled something from behind him, did you really just used to wear these green panties as your shorts? Give me those, as Robin snatched it away from him, making Naruto laugh. So, you're one of those superheroes, huh? Not a bad way to spend your time, said Naruto. Pretty much, said Bruce.
As we reveal his face, that is when he noticed several things on the dinosaur. He was confused. How the hell did you get all the way up there? Oh, that's simple. I walked on the wall, said Naruto. Is it an ability that you have as a ninja, Bruce asked, making mental notes? Well, all ninjas back home can do it, along with walking on water, said Naruto. Lucky, said Barbara with a small pout, finding that incredibly useful, considering that all the harbors and water smell like crap due to the pollution. I have all kind of cool tricks, Naruto said with a smile. Hmm, well, you're back to full health now. Would you have a quick spar, said Bruce. Robin and Batgirl were curious to see how this would go, as Bruce had a way step ahead of them, always holding back in spars to see what they can actually do, as they wonder how he would fight Naruto. Five minutes later, Okay, the kid is really making us look bad, said Dick, as he looked at Naruto and Bruce. He's only surviving and taking hits. He fights like a drunken brawler, Barbara said, as she had to admit while his combat style was okay. For Gotham, the thug's standards were, well, how much you can take and how much you can dish out. And Naruto seemed to be able to take a lot and ditch out a lot, because he did not even look winded in the slightest. Alright, I think I've seen enough, said Bruce as he held his hand up, stopping the spar. Jeez, old man, said Naruto, you're pretty good. And you have a lot of energy. But your style is horrible, said Bruce. What style? Dick said the smirk, making Barbara slap him on the shoulder. No one ever wanted to teach me anything properly, said Naruto. Why? said Barbara. No one ever liked me, so until I got my sensei, if you could call him that, all I really learned was how to walk on trees and water, said Naruto, with a shrug. Bad teachers, Bruce thought the sigh, as he shrugged. Well, if you want, I can teach you, he said. Are you looking to make me a new sidekick, Naruto asked, with a raised eyebrow. If you want, Bruce said. Hmm, sure, but I'm not going to be dressing like some traffic light, or wearing those green shorts. Hey, said Dick, as Naruto tilted his head and looked at him. Well, it was really bad, Naruto said, as Dick simply looked away with a pout. As Naruto then started to slow down and think about it, he was trapped here. He had no idea how to return back home. They had no idea about Kanoha or the Elemental Nation. So he might as well blend in as much as he can. Until he can find a way to get back home. If that is even possible, Naruto thought to himself. Time skip. Three years later. It was not. There was no way for him to get back home. Or at least if there was. He couldn't find it. It has been three years. At the moment, Naruto was driving a motorcycle out of Gotham. Yes, it has been three years since he had met Bruce, and he had learned a lot from his adoptive family. Recently, Dick and Barbara left Gotham and moved to Bloodhaven together as a couple. He was happy that they were happy and watching each other backs. Right now, he was out of Gotham because he was trying to do the same thing, head out and be his own hero. As his path took him down the road, Naruto saw a figure being chased by some guys on motorcycles. As Naruto sped up and caught up with them and soon, he was ahead of them. He then turned and blocked their path as they stopped. Hey, what's your problem? One of the bikers yelled. My problem is that you four are chasing someone. So what's your problem, Naruto asked. We are chasing some metahuman freak that trashed our bar. One of the bikers yelled. Yeah, so get out of the way or take a beating like she will. One of the bikers spoke up, as he got off his bike and took out some chains. One of his other buddies pulled out a bat, another one a knife, and another one pulled out a crowbar. As Naruto turned towards the girl, she had long blonde hair and blue eyes. She was wearing a black shirt and cargo pants. Her clothing looked dirty, as she was nervous. Well, you want her, said Naruto as he took off his helmet. You're gonna have to go through me first. Hey, what's up with those whisker markings? Are you one of those meta freaks as well? It's a burnt mark, dick bag, said Naruto to the biker. The leader scowled as he swung his chains at Naruto. As Naruto ducked, before moving into the man guard, as he raised his hand and backhanded the man across his face, the leader was sent sailing as he crashed into the wall. As he fell, 
unconscious, blood coming from his lip. So, do the rest of you want to end up like him? Kill the freak, another one yell. Huh. I gotta say, I love it when they try and fight, said Naruto as he cracked his knuckles. The one with the bat swung at Naruto as Naruto caught it and yanked it away. Before he gripped and swing, he slammed it into the owner. The force threw the man back into his own friend, their heads knocking together as they pass out. Naruto tossed the bat to the side. The one with the knife rushed towards him intent on stabbing him. Naruto grabbed his wrist and started to squeeze. The guy started to scream as he dropped the knife as he fell down to one knee. You done, said Naruto. I already took out three of your friends. Screw you, freak, the man said. Wrong answer, said Naruto as he slammed his knee in the guy's face. Before lifting him up with one hand and throwing him on his unconscious bodies. As he looked at them before turning towards the girl. As she was there in surprise. You okay, lady? She nodded, but then frowned. Lady, I'm not that old, she said. Besides, we look like we're the same age. Well, I didn't want to assume you were my age. My adopted dad told me not to ask a lady their age. She smiled at hearing that. Your adopted father sounds like a good man, she said. As Naruto simply nodded with a grin of his own. As he started to head back towards his bike. You should get out of here before they wake up. Hey, can I get a ride from you, she said. Suit yourself, said Naruto as he got on his bike. I'm just heading down the road of life to see where it takes me. She walked up towards him. I like that saying. My name is Tara, by the way. Naruto, he said, as he let her got on. He then opened the rough sack on the side of the motorcycle and pulled out a helmet as he handed it to her. Thanks, she said to him. Sorry if it ruins your hair, said Naruto. I'm not that concerned about that. Shame, you're here. Look really good, said Naruto. She blushed as she placed on the helmet. Once it was secured, Naruto revved up the bike and took off as she held on to him. A few hours later, as Naruto came to a stop in front of a diner, why did we stop, she asked, as she took off her helmet. I figure after that incident with those losers, you were hungry. Plus, I could hear your stomach growling, said Naruto. She nodded, but she paused. I don't have any money, she said. Relax, it's on me, said Naruto. As he started to walk towards the diner, as they got inside and got a boot, Naruto spoke up. So, you want to tell me what that was about back there? She was silent as she frowned. Hey, relax. I don't care if you're a mere human, said Naruto. As she looked up into his eyes. As she could tell that he was telling the truth. Well, um, those guys were harassing me. And they were trying to make me join their gang as their new, um, bitch. She said looking disgusted. As Naruto frowned. Well, at least I don't have to feel bad for beating the shit out of them. She nodded at that. Anyway. After one of them grabbed me, I sort of made their bar collapse. Naruto raised eyebrow at that as he noticed a dart on her clothing. I'm going to assume that your powers are earth based. She pulled back as a small earthquake happened, making the restaurant shake. She was scared of what his reaction might be as he reached out and held her hand gently. She gasped when he touched her as the earthquake stopped. Hey, it's okay. I'm going to assume that you don't have control yet, said Naruto. No, she said, shaking her head. Well, that's okay. You just need a teacher, said Naruto, as he held her hand. Where am I going to actually find one, she said, as she take her hand back reluctantly. I could teach you. My adoptive dad taught me a lot about controlling myself, especially my emotions. And from what I can see, your powers are emotional base. Who exactly is your dad to teach you that, she asked. Sorry, can't teach you that. Not yet anyways, said Naruto. As she pouted a bit at that, making him laugh. Now, now, let's just eat for now. And tell you what, you can order dessert as well to make up for me keeping a secret for now, said Naruto. As Tara smiled at that, deal, she said. Time skip. A few weeks later, both Naruto and Tara was in the desert. On a big rock meditating. She was making a few rocks float around her as they rotate around one another, but they kept on bumping in each other. Slow down a bit, Terra. The goal is to rotate them 
So they avoid each other, said Naruto. Ashi nodded. Ashi focus. The rocks slowly start to rotate some more and this time, they were not hitting one another. As Naruto smile at that, good, he said. She smiled as she continued to make the rocks rotate, before they start to shake a little. Okay, you can rest for a bit. As she opened her eyes and released a breath, dropping the rocks. Not bad, Terra, said Naruto. You're actually getting a lot better, said Naruto as he helped her up. As she took the hand offered to her. As she nodded, you think, I can get good enough to be a hero. Oh sure, if you want. Are you a fan of heroes, Naruto asked. Yeah, she said. I always hope I can help people with my powers. As they walked towards his bike that was parked nearby. Oh really? Who's your favorite? As they both got on his bike. Hmm, I always like Wonder Woman. I saw her once back home. Hmm, I like her too. But maybe not for the same reason as you, said Naruto, with a chuckle. As she rolled her eyes. You and every guy in the world. Oh, not because she's pretty, said Naruto. Oh really? What do you like about her then? Tara asks. I like a girl that is strong and a good person for most. Naruto says he started the bike. So, where are we heading next, she said. Her voice louder as they took off on the bike. I was thinking that we had to jump city, said Naruto. It's a few hours away. She nodded as she held Naruto close. As they rolled down the road. Later that night. Huh, not bad, said Naruto as he looked around the city. I still like the desert better, said Terra, as she looked around. Hey, any city is better than the city that I was a hero in a few years back, said Naruto. So, you were a hero before, she said. As that was confirmed now. Still am, said Naruto. And I still have my hero costume. As he looked down toward the skull necklace that was around his neck right beside the one that Snadia gave him. So, which one were you? Before Naruto could respond, there was a scream in the corner. You're about to find out, said Naruto as he tapped the skull necklace. As some little machines started to crawl out of it, that started to cover his body. When it was fully set up, Naruto was in a complete black suit, with a red swirl on his chest. There was also red lines across his arms and hips. He had on a utility belt. He was wearing white gloves, with a red X on the back, and protective gauntlets along with a black cape. On his face he had on what looked like a domino mask, with a skull theme, covering his eyes. Clear her eyes widened at that as she saw him in his costume. You're Kitsukage, she said. As Naruto gave her a slight nod before leaping off, looking down into the alleyway he saw, a woman getting mugged by a guy. As Naruto landed right behind the man and grabbed him by the neck, before slamming him into the wall. He then picked the purse up. And there you go, said Naruto. Thank you, she said, before running off. The man was groaning in pain as he glanced up. What, what the hell are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in Gotham? Decided to branch out. Become my own hero, said Naruto. Great, now this city have one of those psycho, psychics here. As he tried to get up and run. As Naruto watched him before he pointed his palm towards the man. As Red Engine channel in his palm before shooting outwards. As it wrapped around the man, as Naruto walked up towards him, he grabbed him by the collar and lifted him up. Tell your low-life buddies that this is not my territory. He slugged the man in the face, knocking him out after that. Looking up, Naruto saw Terra at the alleyway. So, it was the bat that taught you control. No wonder you're such a good teacher, she said. Don't worry, said Naruto. I am not as brutal as he is. Good, she said, with a nod. That is when they saw something flew over their head. Is that a meteor? Terra said. Well, it looks like I'm not done tonight, said Naruto, as he took off after the meteor. Not even 10 minutes in the city, and I'm already a hero psychic. Terra thought as she rushed after him. Partner, Naruto corrected as they both went after the meteor. That brought a smile to her face. She was glad that he saw her as a partner and not a sidekick and she hoped to prove that she was worthy of that trust. They arrived to see the scene of the crash when they heard a smash. They turned to see a young woman. She had orange skin and red hair. Her hands seemed to be in some sort of cuff. She was slamming it against everything. As she slammed it on the beam, the people started to fall. As Naruto jumped and kicked the alien girl away, as Terra 
levitated some rocks for the people to climb on. You guys get out of here, she said, and let us handle this. As the civilians ran to a safe distance, as Naruto was backing away from the alien girl, she swung her cuffs at him as he ducked and dodged, as he realized that she was strong, incredibly so. When she swung at him once again, Naruto held his hand out as a Rasengan form. He then proceeded to drill it in her stomach. She yelled as she was blasted right into a chuck. As Terra chose this moment to drop some boulders on the chuck for good measure. However, the alien girl exploded out of it as she landed. She scowled at Naruto, her eyes glowing green. Oh great, Naruto thought. Zada, she yelled as she held her hands up. However, a ram appeared and slammed right into her, throwing her into the wall. Said green ram shifted back to normal revealing a boy, wearing a black and purple suit with a mask. Ex Doom Patrol member, Beast Boy sir, how can I help Beast Boy said. He then realized who he was looking at. Wowzers, you're Kitsukage, aren't you? It's an honor sir, he said, as he was amazed at meeting the shinobi hero. Huh, nice to meet you too Beast Boy, said Naruto patting him on the shoulder, and you can drop the sir thing. As the girls start to get back up, so Beast Boy, you feel like doing a bit of a team up, said Naruto. Yes sir, Beast Boy said, as the girl picked up a bus, as she threw it at them, hitting a nearby hamburger shop. Yo, who's here messing up my neighborhood? A tall figure said. He was wearing a grey hoodie, sweatshirt, and black pants, along with blue sneakers. She started it, Beast Boy says, he pointed towards the alien girl. The girl growled as she smashed her hands into the ground several times. The cuffs broke, revealing a normal pair of handcuffs. She then started to fire engine beams at them. The girl is gonna wreck the whole city, the tall figure said. However, a wall appeared in front of them, a barrier of sorts, blocking the attacks. Maybe. Fighting is not the answer. A figure arrived. A dark hooded cloak, showing only the lower part of her face. Her eyes, purple. As Naruto then realized something as he looked at the alien girl. She's scared, he thought. Everyone, stop, he yelled. As everyone came to a stop, Naruto slowly approached the alien girl as he held his hand up. She started to speak. However, he couldn't understand her. Easy, he said. I am not here to hurt you, he said to her. I just want to help. Once again, she started to speak, but her words, he couldn't understand. It's okay. Look, said Naruto. As he revealed a lock pick, he took hold of her cups as he started to pick the lock. Once her hands were free, she started to massage her wrists. As she then looked at him. There. Now you can. Naruto was cut off. As she placed a hand behind his head, as she pressed her lips against his. Terror eyes widened at that. As she started glare at the alien girl. The alien girl then pushed Naruto back. If you wish not to be destroyed, you must leave me alone, she said, as she flew off. As Naruto was silent at that, despite Bruce training to deal with seductive techniques from female villains, he still wasn't the best, especially when someone just go out of their way to kiss you. As Beast Boy walked over, you okay, dude, he asked. Yeah, I'm fine, said Naruto. So, dude, what brings you to Jump City? Shouldn't you be helping Batman? Talk later, first. We need to find her. Why? Said Terra, giving Naruto a hard look. Probably so that he can get another kiss, the tall figure said. Before Naruto could respond, a massive spaceship showed itself over the city. I think that girl has friends, the hooded girl said. Suddenly a hologram appeared, showing what to be a gigantic lizard in space armor. Attention Earthlings! We are here to capture a prisoner of ours. Stay out of our way and your city will be left with minimum damage. The lizard man yelled before the hologram disappeared. Okay, that guy is definitely the enemy, Terra said with a frown. I agree. And this is officially an alien invasion. Which one of you are ready to help me, said Naruto. I'm in, Beast Boy yelled excitedly. You know I'm in, Terra said as she crossed her arms. As Beast Boy turned towards a tall hooded figure, who was turned to leave. So, you don't help. I'm Beast Boy by the way. I haven't really had anyone to hang out with since I quit the Doom Patrol. 
this is gonna be fun. We can play video games, he said, with a grin. The tall figure grit his teeth as he turned and pulled down his hood, revealing his head. Part of it was cybernetic. There, take a good long look. I had an accident and now I'm a monster, alright? A cyborg, he shouted as he clenched his fists. Monster? You don't look like a monster to me, said Naruto. Dude, you're so cool. You look like a Gundam, Beast Boy said as he waved his arms excitedly. You're both weird dudes, aren't you? Cyborg said as he looked at them. So, what's your name, Naruto asked. I guess you can call me Cyborg, he said as he decided on a hero name. Perfect. Every team need a tech expert, said Naruto. As Terra approached, nice to meet you, Sai, she said. My name is Terra. As Naruto smiled, glad that she was trying to make friends, know that she had a bit of control over her powers. He then noticed the other hooded figure, trying to sneak off. Hold on, miss, said Naruto. Aren't you gonna help? She stopped as she turned to look at him. I don't really interact with others a lot, she said. Sounds lonely, said Naruto. She was silent at that, but she frowned a bit. Look, you showed up the crash site, just in case. So that tells me that you want to help, right? She looked at him before she nodded. Then, you should help us. Plus, it's always good to make new friends. As she looked at him curiously, like she was trying to figure him out. My name is Raven, she said. As she floated over to them. As Naruto raised eyebrow to that as he followed Raven over to the others. I'm going to assume that you're a magic user, he said. She nodded. Magic? Cool. What kind of tricks can you do? Asked Beast Boy. Are you like Zatanna? Asked Terra. As Raven rolled her eyes. I'm more like Constantine, she said. Hope you're not a drunk like him, said Naruto. As he shook his head. He had interacted with the man a lot. Raven smiled at that. She had indeed met Constantine and he was always drinking. So... Who was the leader? Cyborg asked. Gotta go with Kitsukagi, said Terra with a smile. I agree, dude. He was trained by the bat, and he's one of the big three, Beast Boy said with a nod. Raven raised an eyebrow at that, as she had heard of Batman during her short time on Earth. Really? He doesn't feel like a dark person, she said. Making Naruto raise an eyebrow. Empathy, he asked her, as she nodded. So, what's the plan? Cyborg asked. Okay, first we find that girl and ask her what is going on, said Naruto. I can use my tech to track her. As a panel opened up on his arm. I could track her, Beast Boy said, as he turned into a bloodhound. Good idea. We can do both to make sure we find her, said Naruto. As the other two nodded. Later. Naruto, Raven and Terror followed Cyborg and Beast Boy. They soon came up on the movie theater that had a hole in the wall. Beast Boy howled as he pointed his nose at the hole. As he patted Beast Boy in the head, good job, both of you, he said, as he also nodded at Cyborg. As Beast Boy returned back to normal as they headed for the hole. They looked into the theater as they saw the alien girl eating snacks at the snack stand. Whoa, someone has a big stomach, Terra said, seeing the rappers on the floor. She might have had a bigger stomach than even me and Choji, Naruto thought. Her hands instantly glow green as her eyes turn green as well as she floated upwards. What do you want? She yelled. Whoa, hold on miss. We just want to ask why you're here, said Naruto. Yeah, don't you know how to make friends? Asked Beast Boy. The girl tilted her head. Friends? What are friends? She said. This surprised the others. Friends are, well, people you are nice to. And just spend time with Terra said. Trying her best to explain. You mean comrades or allies, she said. Exactly, said Naruto. Why would you want to ally with me, she asked. Well, there's a lizard alien here looking for you, Raven said. The girl growled as her eyes lit up. The Gordians won't take me, she said. Why do they want you, Cyborg asked. I am a prize for beating my people in battle, she said, with a scowl. Well, you won't have to go with them if you don't want to, said Naruto. You would help me beat them, she asked. Sure, said Naruto. And you seem a lot more friendly than them too. She smiled at that before she pulled Naruto into a hug. Hey, said Naruto. 
and she was fucking a bit too tight. Oh, sorry friend, she said that she released him. As he could breathe once again. That's okay, said Naruto. The name is Kitsukagi. Cyborg here. Beast Boy at your service. Call me Terra. I'm Raven. So, what's your name? My name is Coriander, she said. But it translates to Starfire on this planet. Starfire it is, said Naruto with a nod. The wall exploded to the right. As a bunch of space lizards. They were all in armors, rushed inside. There she is. Capture her. Not gonna happen. Guys, go, he said. As Naruto whipped out two kunai, Chakra covered the both of them as he sliced. A blast right down the center from a weapon. As it slammed right into another that fell down. As Naruto threw the right kunai into one of the enemy's arm. As Starfire saw one of them take aim at Naruto, she growled. And blasted him with green energy right in his face. Thanks for the safe star, said Naruto as he ducked. Before he brought his leg up and slammed it in one of their face. Blasting the thing right through the hole. Starfire nodded as she flew off attacking another enemy. Beast Boy transformed into a bear as he swung his paw. Blasting away the aliens as well. Azeroth, Metreon, Zintos, Raven said. As she covered some furniture in her black magic before. Slamming them all into the lizard man. As Cyborg cloak was destroyed. It showed off his whole cyborg body. Do you have any weapons? Naruto asked. As he slammed a Rasengan into another one, sending it through the wall. Hold on, he said. I think I can. Hey! As one of the lizard men shot him with a blaster. Terra waved her hands at the floor beneath. The Gordanian opened up as he fell down below. I have your back, dude, said Beast Boy as he turned to a gorilla and grabbed two before smashing them together and throwing them into the hole that Terra made. Yeah, so get to work on that weapon, Terra said, as she levitated some boulders and slammed them into the enemy. As Cyborg started to work on his hand. You fool, you think you can beat an entire army? One of the lizard men spoke up. Yeah, I think we can, said Naruto. Yeah, you guys aren't doing so well so far, said Beast Boy. And it's about to get worse for you, Cyborg said, as his arm turned into an arm cannon. Before they could react, he fired. Booyah! As they were all sent flying. Retreat! They start to yell. Whoa. That was great, said Terra. This isn't over yet, said Naruto. Indeed. They will retaliate against the city if we don't attack them at their base. Starfire says she flew up in the air. I can teleport us all inside the main spaceship. If you can point it out, Raven said. Good idea, Raven. Starfire, lead the way, said Naruto. As she led them outside. Now this is a much better team than the Doom Patrol said Beast Boy. As Naruto smirked at that likeness attitude. What's with the mass? Cyborg asks. It's to hide my secret identity. Duh said Beast Boy. What identity? You're green said Raven. They have a point BB said Naruto. As he looked at them before removing the mass. At least now my face can breathe he said. As Naruto nodded at that as he looked at Raven. Who he could tell was nervous. Your powers are pretty interesting. I'm going to assume that you use your own soul to engulf things, said Naruto. She looked at Naruto and nodded. You're quite observant. Well, my adoptive family insists I pay attention, said Naruto. She smiled at that. Well, I'm glad that you're not a knucklehead idiot. Trust me, I was, until I was 12 years old. But my adoptive family was able to knock it out of my system. If you could say it like that. Yet they still could not stop your ramen addiction, Terra said. As she's known him for some time now and yet, she was easily able to see that he was obsessed with ramen. Traitor, said Naruto. That's it, said Starfire, as the main ship was aiming a blast down towards the city. Great. Seems like they got our message about Star staying here. And it seems like that's your response, said Naruto. You can get us in there quickly, right? Cyborg said to Raven, as she nodded. Okay, when we get in, Starfire, you will lead the way to the main control room. After that, our priority is containment and stopping them from blasting the city to pieces. That will be your job, Sai, said Naruto, giving him a grin. What about us, boss? Beast Boy asks, just turned to himself and Terra. You two attack anyone that tried to stop Sai from gaining control of the ship, said Naruto. Better, make sure I take a few boulders with me then, Terra said. 
Metal is just earth that has been refined, Beast Boy said. Everyone paused as they turned towards him. What? I watch Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Legend of Korra as well, he said. As Naruto chuckled, and who says being a nerd doesn't help, as he patted him on the shoulder. Wait, yeah, true, said Terra. Focus, we need to save this little raven, said, as she brought her hands up. The black engine took the shape of a raven and flew them all towards the ship. Inside the ship, they appear inside the hallway. Okay team, let's stay alert, said Naruto, as Starfire led the way. Cyborg nodded as a scream opened up on his arm. There's a lot of energy and life form in this direction, he said. As they arrived at the door which was locked, they should be behind here, he said to them, checking the scream. I feel like they're all behind this door, and very agitated Raven said as she opened her eyes. Okay, once the door is open, Terra, Raven, Beast Boy, you all cover Cyborg as he tried to take control of the ship. Starfire and I can confront the guy that is in charge. Any idea on how to open this? Terra asks. As she covered her fist in rock, Naruto held out his hand as a Rasengan form. He then drive it into the door, blasting it off the hinges. Knock knock. Cyborg said, as he proceeded to turn his arm into a cannon and fire. Room service beast boy said as he charged in, turned into a dinosaur. Stop them and bring her to me, the apparent leader shout out. As Starfire and Naruto charge towards him, Cyborg approached as he started to hack into it. He frowned. The controls for the space cannon cannot be stopped, he said. Do they have a self-destruct on this thing? Beast Boy asks. Cyborg nodded as he concentrates. Before he smirked the alarms and went off, self-destruct in five minutes. The ship spoke up. Game over, said Naruto. No, the leader yelled. However, Naruto threw two kunas in his shoulder, pinned him to the wall. Starfire then moved in and slugged him across the face. Where's my sister? She yelled. That trough fled the same time as you. She probably crashed. Somewhere on this planet, leader spat out. Starfire grew angry at that as she raised her hand but knew to grab it. We have to get out of here, he said. The ship started to shake violently. She looked at Naruto before she nodded. As Raven teleported them all out of there. Later, Naruto and the group was on the island. It was where the spaceship had self-destruct. The pieces crashing into the nearby ocean. Wow, a lot of equipment survived the crash, Beast Boy said. Good, we can use it for an idea I have, said Naruto. What are you thinking, Terra asked. I'm thinking that we make a base here and start a hero team for this city, said Naruto. Wait, seriously? Beast Boy said. Sure. We all save our entire city, and we barely knew one another. Imagine if we actually trained together. We could be as good as the Justice League someday, Terra said with a smile. Cyborg smiled at that. I like the sound of that, he said. What about you, Raven, said Naruto as he turned towards her. She hesitated, but nodded. I like helping people, so sure. I mean, she said. As Naruto smiled at that. Starfire then approached as she was in a new outfit that consists of a purple skirt, a purple shirt, along with purple heels and boots, silver gauntlets on her arms. Please, do I look nice, she said, as she looked around. You look great, Star, said Naruto as he gave her a thumbs up, which made her smile. Meanwhile, in Bloodhaven, Dick and Barbara were doing a patrol for the night, as they saw what looked like a meteor crash into the park. We should check it out to make sure it's not anything dangerous, Dick said, as they moved towards it. Barbara nodded and moving towards it as well. There was a crater in the ground. As someone flew out of it, an alien girl. She had orange skin, black hair and violet eyes. Full body armor with a black crop top, mini skirt and high thigh boots. She looked at Dick. She then smiled as she grabbed him. Hey, what the? As she pulled him into a kiss. Barbara, eyes went wide, before she scowled. The alien girl then pulled away as she smiled. What planet am I on, she said. Er, Earth, Dick said, spluttering out with a blush. Hmm, nice plant. I like it, she said. Who are you, said Barbara, as she tried not to get mad. Oh, 
you can call me Blackfire. That's what my name translates into your language. Thanks for the help learning it by the way cutie she said as she winked at him. Wait, how did he help you? Barbara said as the urge to attack this girl was growing. Oh, my people learn language from the connection of our lips. That's not a problem, right? She said. Well, here on earth, that is a way two people show their affection for one another, Dick said. Blackfire eyes widened at that before she giggled. And what exactly is so funny? Barbara asks. Oh, nothing. I just like how honest he is. I find it cute, Blackfire said, as she tried to get her giggles under control. Well, we try to help people. Speaking of which, we should leave before the police get here, Barbara said. Dick nodded as he looked at Blackfire. Do you have a place to go? Barbara looked at Dick as she glared at him. She has nowhere to go, said Dick with a frown. Barbara scowled but she sighed as she nodded. As Blackfire smiled, you two are so cute together. I'm already jealous. Follow us. We have a place for you to stay, said Dick. Wow, first meeting and already inviting me to stay with you. You earthlings are so bold, Blackfire said in a teasing tone. As Dick glanced towards Barbara, who was sending him a glare. I hope that Nurt is not having this kind of trouble. Wherever he is, said Dick, as they made their way. But guys, be in subso right here. If you want to next sports and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification they posted. Remember, share to your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming your way. Yes, that's correct, guys. I indeed have four channels which I post. What if on every single day? Yes, you heard that correctly. Every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the Unmaking family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. So without further ado, I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace, guys.